Okay, let's talk about factoring this thing. Now, what are we looking at here? Well, if you said, oh, this is a polynomial, that's excellent. Okay, matter of fact, if you said polynomial, I would have to give you a happy face. But if you said this is a uh, trinomial, I would have to give you a happy face with a little mohawk. And if you said a quadratic trinomial, well, then you get the happy face, mohawk, and an A+. Plus. Okay, so all of those descriptions are excellent, okay, but a quadratic trinomial is kind of the most technical description of this thing. But the bottom line is this. Uh, in algebra, you're going to need to know how to factor these things, okay, and this is really, really important. Uh, a matter of fact, I would have to say factoring is the number one skill you need to know uh, that's going to really determine if, whether you're going to be great at algebra or not. If you don't know how to factor polynomials, now, you're going to really struggle in algebra. You very well may not even be able to pass. So if you're having a tough time uh, in algebra, take a look at your factoring skills. I bet you that you are, uh, you know, weak in them. And you have to be super strong in factoring. And the only way you're going to do that is to learn how to deal with uh, uh, different situations and practice them. But this stuff doesn't have to be hard. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how to deal with quadratic trinomials like this uh, and on how to factor them in three easy steps. Now... Uh, to be precise, uh, when we're talking about polynomials and kind of like the whole universe of factoring, you got to know how to deal with like greatest common factoring. That's not, we're not dealing with this in this particular video. I have tons of videos on factoring, by the way, in my algebra playlist. So I'm going to give you some additional recommendations on this. But this is kind of just a quick overview of the factoring universe that you have to be really good at. Okay. So the first is how to factor out the greatest common factor. And then you have to deal with trinomials. And that's what we're dealing with right now. Now, there's two different flavors. There's one where there's a 1 in front of the x squared. That's what we're dealing with in this um, uh, video, all right? And then there's one where, like, let's say you had, like, a 5 right there, okay? Well, it, that's another type. They're, they're related, okay? But you got to have to deal, but these are both trinomials. We're going to be dealing with one of these types. And then you have special factoring rules and a kind of group factoring. But the way you're going to get better at factoring is just to, like, improve you know, these skills one at a time, okay? Greatest common factor, that doesn't be difficult. Uh, uh, this right here is super easy, okay? Uh, so it's just like, you know, you're whittling this down, but as you improve all your little sub-skills in factoring, you are going to end up looking like this in algebra, okay? Again, if you blow this off, you're like, nah, nah, that's really not that important. Now, uh, unfortunately, you're going to find out the hard way that you're not going to be able to, like, solve problems if you don't know how to factor, right? Okay, so we're going to get to these three easy steps to deal with these type of problems. Now, if you already know how to factor, okay, already have your the way you were taught, and there's a couple of different ways you could be taught factoring. If you're successful at factoring and you're already great at it, just stick with what you know, okay? However, if you need like a new approach or a new way, okay, if you want to improve in factoring because you're not that strong, then stick around for a few minutes. I'm going to show you very easy technique to deal with these guys. All right, so uh, before we get going, though, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have uh, pre-algebra. Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and finally now Pre-Calculus. But I also um, have many courses in the area of test preparation. So those would include like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace or Alex exam, CLEP exam, uh, teacher certification exams. So all those exams have one thing on them. They have math. So if someone thinks math is pretty important. You don't do well in a math section. You don't do well in an exam. So... If you're taking some sort of uh, uh, type of exam, uh, go to my website, check out my full course catalog. I have a ton of uh, test prep courses in terms of the math sections on these exams that can help you out. Um, I also do a lot with uh, homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system, and then obviously help those of you who are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to improve in math, uh, or pass your math class, then you have to be serious about note-taking. I've been teaching math for decades, and it's apparent to me, the one thing I can point to with consistency is that those students who take great math notes almost always end up looking like this person at the end of the year. And the reverse is true. Those students who, you know, take math notes here and there, but uh, quite frankly, they're on their cell phone more than they're paying attention to the teacher. You know, listen, I get it. Thankfully, 
there was no cell phones back in the 1980s because if I had a cell phone, I probably would not have graduated because these guys are awesome, but they're completely distracting. The name of the game is focus, all right? Focus is the key to success in anything you do, and math is no different. You have to be paying attention consistently. Now, as you improve in your note-taking, you can use my notes to study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so if you think you can factor this guy, go ahead and factor it real quick. It should take you, you know, all of like 10 seconds. Uh, but if you do not know how to factor it, well, let's get to these three easy steps where you can factor these type of trinomials. All right, so here are the steps, and I'm going to go ahead and, and show this now. This, uh, these steps apply to quadratic trinomials. Okay, there's three things here, right? It's a polynomial, there's x squared, and x. Now, this could be y. These variables don't let don't get uh, hung up on, oh, there has to be an x. No, it could be a y, it could be z. It doesn't make a difference. As long as there's a, uh, like an x squared or z squared, an x, and then a number, okay? So a couple uh, points, okay? One, this technique that I'm talking about is where you have a one, okay? Like an x squared, there's really a one right there. Okay, just as there's a one right here. So an examples of this would be like z squared plus eight z plus three. Okay, this is the this is what I'm talking about when it's written in standard form. There's only a one. Okay, a positive one in front of that coefficient. So this is one type of quadratic trinomial that you need to know how to uh, to uh, factor. Now, the other types is when you have like a, other, a number other than 1, like say 4. So like let's say 7y uh, squared minus 8y plus 3. So once you master this one technique that I'm going to show you right here, then you want to move on to these other type of quadratic trinomials. And this technique that I'm going to show you can actually be kind of modified to be able to uh, factor those guys as well. Okay, so now here is the steps, but let's just kind of set this up even a little bit further. All right. If I said factor this number 10, you'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can factor that. That's 2 times 5. And you'd be correct. It's also 1 times 10. Right. So you got some factors. You got some choices here. If I said factor 7, you'd be like, mm, that's just 1 times 7. OK. There's no this is prime. OK. The point I'm trying to make here is 7 is prime. 10 is not. OK. Prime numbers are uh, numbers that where one is the only factor, okay? So one times the, the number itself, where this number here is not, uh, this is factorable because I can have other factors here. It's the same thing with uh, polynomials and trinomials. So if I give you a problem like this, okay, and I say factor this, right? You're, one of the answers that you're, one of the things that you could have as an answer is prime. Like, hey, this thing cannot be factored. So don't uh, forget that, okay? So when you're given a question, not every single prime and not every single trinomial can be factored. Sometimes it is prime, but we never, we don't really know that in advance, okay? All right, so now that I kind of have this set up so you can identify this type of quadratic trinomial, here is what we do. We're going to multiply. So what I mean by that we're going to take this one right there, and we're going to multiply by this uh, last number. In this case, it's negative 6. That's step one. And then step two is we're going to take the factors of negative 6, we're going to list them out. Okay? So we're going to take this answer from uh, step one, and we're going to list out the factors. It's super easy to do this. And then we're going to finally, in our last step, uh, find the factors that we need and write our answer. Okay? So this is how we do this. And let me show you this. This is uh, really cool stuff. All right, so the first thing again, step one, is we're going to take this number. Of course, it's always going to be one right here. So one times negative six is negative six. All right, now, how do we write the factors? How do we list the factors down? Here's what you do, okay? Start with one. So it's going to be one times six and one times six. Now, this is a negative six, so I can go negative and negative. Always do it in pairs. So it's negative one times positive six is negative six, and positive 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, okay? All right, so let's go 2 and 3 and 2 and 3. You always do it in pairs and just put a negative and negative, okay? So negative 2 times positive 3, negative 6. Positive 2 times negative 3 is a negative 6. So now that's step 2. We just list all the factors now, okay? There's no more factors. And the easiest way to do this is start with 1 and just increase on this side. 
here, this is one, this is two. If you have other, you know, factors, just keep kind of scaling up. That's the uh, easiest way to kind of organize this. All right, so hopefully you didn't find that difficult. So we just did steps one and two. Now, step three, what are we doing at step three? Well, this is step three. We're going to identify the factors that we need if this thing's factable. So we have to look at our middle term here, okay? What is this guy right here? This is a positive one, okay? That's x, but there's really a plus one x or a positive one x, okay? So what I want to do is I want to find the pair of factors here that add up to a positive one, to this middle number. Now this isn't difficult, so let me show you how this works. So negative one plus six is what? That's a positive five. Uh, one plus negative six is negative five. Uh, negative two plus positive three, positive one. Uh, two plus negative three, negative one. So I'm looking through my little list here and I'm looking for a positive one, okay? Which pair of factors, um, or which, yeah, which pair of factors here add up to this positive one? So you're looking through your list right here, and I'm like, da, 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 da. oh, this one adds up to positive one. So these are your uh, answers for your factors, okay? So let me go ahead and write this. So remember, when you factor a trinomial, it's always going to be two binomials. Here we have an x squared. You're always going to have one x here and another x right there, okay? Typically, most students, most students know that. Now they just don't know what to put in the rest of the stuff. Well, here is what you plug into it, okay? Negative 2 right there, and this would be a positive 3 right there, and you're done, okay? So you just factor that, all right? That is it. So you're like, wow, that's it. Yeah, that's it, okay? So this, now, of course, I'm going to explain this to you, um, but, you know, this might seem... Uh, what's the word, you know, more involved than it actually is because I'm explaining it to you. But let's make up another problem here real quick. And the best way to practice factoring is just to make a problem up. So let's do x plus 4 times x minus 3, okay? Here, this is the answer, okay? But I'm going to make a problem here. So I'm going to multiply these guys together. That's x squared. This gives me a negative 3x um, actually, let's use another number to make this more interesting. How about 5 here? Stick with me one second. I'm just going to make the problem. And this is a good opportunity for you to practice your FOIL technique. So this would be x squared uh, minus 3x. This would be plus 5x, right? And this would be negative 15. All right, so let's say x squared plus 2x minus 15. Okay, so this is my... Uh, problem. Okay, now if I did this right, here it is. All right, we want to factor this. If I if I do this correct, he, this should be the answer. Okay, so you understand this? So I'm creating the answer uh, to get the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how uh, this works. Okay, we'll follow this step, uh, these three steps. So here's a one. Okay, I'm going to take this one, multiply it by negative 15. That's negative 15 right there. Okay, let's list the factors of negative 15, 1 and 15, 1 and 15, 3 and 5, 3 and 5. When you get better at this, I'm looking for what? I'm looking for the pair of factors that add up to 2. So at 1 and 15 and 1 and 15, there's no way I'm going to get a 2 out of adding these guys up. So I'm more interested in these 3 and 5. I'm like, yeah, I could definitely get a 2 from that. So let's just... Uh, get these factors, negative 3 times 5, or 3 times negative 5, which one adds up to 2, a positive 2? This one, okay? Negative 3 plus 5 is a positive 2. That's what I need, so this is going to be, remember, it's going to be two binomials, an x and an x. This would be a minus 3, and this would be a plus 5, okay? And that doesn't make a difference. I have an x plus 5 right there and an x minus 2 right there x minus 3 times x plus 5, they are equivalent. But you can see how this works, okay? And you're not going to get better at any uh, factoring uh, technique unless you practice it a lot. That's really the key. But if you were confused on, you know, like there's another uh, method out there called a kind of guess and check, you should know that method as well. But if you're like just confused and you just want like a procedure to follow every single time that you can absolutely guarantee the correct answer, 
well, this is an excellent uh, technique, okay? And it will help you, the students out there who have been struggling with factoring, all right? Just get one thing down at a time, all right? Get your trinomials down. Um, now, I've done other videos on factoring trinomials. You can find those in my algebra playlist, but if you really, really want to learn this stuff, then you want to check out like my algebra course, okay? That's where I really teach this super uh, thoroughly. But again, if you already know how to factor, you know, stick with what you know. As long as you're successful, that's what counts, right? There isn't uh, exactly one and only one way to factor. But the more you know about factoring, the better off you're going to be in algebra. Okay, so if you thought this video was helpful, this helped you out with your factoring, please consider smashing that like button. I would certainly appreciate that. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to make math clear and understandable, okay? So yes, you have to, there's a lot in, in algebra and in mathematics and more advanced math. There is a lot to learn. However, everyone is capable of learning it. You gotta do your part though. You gotta be focused, you gotta be taking notes, you gotta be talking to your math teacher. So that's, you know, on you, okay? If you're serious about learning and you do this, then you are capable of learning, okay? But my job is to try to explain these concepts in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, um, posting stuff. I have a ton of uh, things uh, on my channel already, uh, topics for you to take advantage of, but I'm posting new stuff all the time. But my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.